Hey, I want to tell you how to remove uh, like tie rod ends, ball joints, and center links and that type of stuff without having to use a pickle fork. This is a pickle fork. It actually sits, I hardly actually use it that much uh, because, uh, unless I'm changing the part, because it'll booger up the boot. And a lot of times you don't want to booger up the boot. Now you would use this in conjunction with a nice hammer like this, my favorite hammer, and uh, but you only need the hammer. Actually, my cousin taught me this years ago. He never even got a pickle fork. He used to work a uh, transmission shop, he used to raise super stock, won a lot by cheating, <laughs> but he won a lot. Anyway, and also uh, I like people that fucking wonder why I put truck bed lining on this uh, Samurai. You know, I might, I didn't really uh, sand nothing here, I just sprayed right over the old paint. Uh, I'll probably paint this black later, but the, the hood is always going to be truck bed lining because I like laying tools on top of everything. As a matter of fact, it, just as a side note, when I do the El Camino, since I always lay tools on it, I'm thinking about just doing truck bed lining like a racing stripe from here to here on a hood only. So I can lay tools on it. <laughs> you know gonna win those shows that's for sure but who gives a shit but well, there's no rust but anyway the uh for instance uh you got let's see if i could shoot this camera like more like on a hold it there steadier with tripod sort of this uh this uh what the hell you call it um you got a like ball joint right or tie run in right so for instance uh what you would do like after you remove the castle nut is you would stick the pickle fork in there like that and you would hammer the end of the pickle fork after you remove the castle nut and you get that tie rod end off right now what a lot of people do if they don't have the pickle fork <laughs> what a lot of people do incorrectly is what they'll do is they'll try to you don't want to do this they'll hammer on the top like ah, trying to get that out then way in hell it'll never come out and it'll booger up the threads and everything else right all you do is smack it right there on the side. Pops right out, man. You gotta give it a good whack. The bigger the hammer, the better. Like using a 32 ounce ball peen hammer versus this one works better. It, it, the big hammer works better than a 32 ounce ball peen hammer. But uh, 32 ounce ball peen hammer will work. They got the three pounders or some shit too. Uh, the bigger the hammer, the better. But you won't damage the seal. That's the thing. Because sometimes you gotta drop this stuff like say for instance uh, I don't know there's other times you might want to drop the suspension components to uh, do something else and that's the way to do it and you know it's just another tool you gotta have to have this thing is like absolutely totally unnecessary I actually also have another ball joint separator that's like the screw type that you know hooks in there and you screw it down this thing works much much faster just a plain hammer all you do is you take that castle nut off the top here. And you don't smack it on the top. You smack it on the side. You don't smack the the uh, the tie rod it's, itself itself. You smack what it's screwed into, what it's actually pressed into. Excuse me. Pops right out every time. So there you go. Just a quick, quick, simple tip. Just you know, if you know what it is, fine. I mean, as the mechanics know this shit, a lot of people that don't do mechanic work don't don't know this. That's all you need. The bigger the hammer, the easier it pops out. It works faster than anything, believe me.